Hello and welcome to this video on the labor market. In this video we'll have a look at the diagram for the labor market and we'll explain the term derived demand. Finally, you'll have a look at the relationship between real wages and the quantity of labor in hours. The labor market is a market in which workers offer their services and employers are looking for workers. This is something within the diagram that confuses a lot of people. The workers are indeed demanding a job, but there's very little to demand if there's no work available. By definitions, workers do not demand a job, but they offer their services in return for a job. It is employers that are looking for workers and therefore create demand. For any factor market, whether it's labor, capital, or for that matter, land, we are talking about a derived demand. If the output in an economy increases, the demand for labor or the demand for capital, think in machines, buildings, etc., will increase. If the economy is slowing down, the demand for these factor markets will fall. So for the labor market, this means that the amount of workers that employers are looking for depends on their views on production and sales. So if GDP grows, we may expect an increase in demand on the labor market. As we've seen before, the term real in economics refers to corrected for inflation. For both workers and employers, real wages are most relevant. For workers, it's not so much the nominal wages, in other words, what you get transferred that is relevant, but what you can purchase with that income. Please notice on the horizontal axis we have quantity of labor in hours. We'll talk about that in a second. The supply curve, SL, is the workers offering their services. And the demand curve is employers looking for demand. What is this quantity of labor in hours? Let's have a look at a full-time job of 40 hours. This job can be done by one person, but it can also be done by two people. This does not mean there is an increase in labor. Yes, two people have a job instead of one, but the amount of labor demanded has not increased. This is the reason why we measure the quantity of labor in hours. Another term for the quantity of labor in hours is FTE. FTE stands for full-time employment. As mentioned, real wages Let's turn to, let us turn to real wages. Wages are the payments from employers to employees in exchange for the work that is done by employees. Therefore, wages are the price for labor. As we've seen before in economics, real wages refers to the wages cor corrected for inflation. And within this diagram, there is the assumption that workers are willing to work more if the real wage increases. For the demand curve counts that employers will hire less workers if real wages increases. If real wages increase, it means there is an increase in the cost of production. An increase in the cost of production leads to an increase of the price of the product. The price of the product falls, the demand for the product will also fall. Therefore, less demand for labor. Another consequence could be, with the increase in the price for labor, there is the possibility that labor will be substituted for capital. 
let us explore how equilibrium in the labor market is achieved. In this situation, we see excess supply. At the given wage rate, we'll find more workers willing to offer their services than there is demand for these services. This means that workers will have to lower their wages in order to get a job. As a consequence of this lowering in price, employers will hire more workers, eventually establishing equilibrium at WE. In the next video, we'll have a look at how changes in the labor market affect equilibrium.